Right, you having people getting milkshakes. You having people, you have acid in it. Milkshake, dude, who cares? I care. Why? Because I don't know if there's acid in that milkshake. It's a salt, it's battery. I would never encourage. No, I'm not scared of milkshakes. I think someone who throws a milkshake is a pussy. But I do have a problem with someone invading someone's personal space. Time for the latest installment of Change My Mind, where we rationalize our positions on controversial topics. Full interviews, unedited, with regular people in their full context. This week, we decided to revisit the topic of hate speech, given that it's the recent controversy du jour. Where's the line between freedom of speech and who decides this is hate speech? This past week, we made a change in how we handle um, hate speech. We have many, many different reviewers. They will do a review. Again, there are lots of different videos um, produced by Stephen Crowder. He's been a long time YouTuber. But in this, we need better frameworks around what is hate speech, what's not. But hate speech, that's what it is. It's hate speech. The problem is that hate speech is not so clearly defined, least of all by big tech. So we decided to take to the Google offices in Austin to get some answers. The whole day ended up being surprisingly civil and productive. Seems common ground is easy to find on this topic. So before we move on, uh, how do you define hate speech, if at all, and should any speech be regulated? Comment below. Oh, hey, look, here's someone who actually works for Google. You're welcome to change my mind, though, if you disagree. I'd actually like to know why you think it. Be, well, it's because it's not a real thing. It's legally not a recognized term. Ah, if you're saying it's not legally defined. Yes, hate speech is not a real thing. Now, if we, you know, we can talk about what people consider maybe offensive speech, but what do you think hate speech is, I guess? How would you define it? Because you seem surprised that I say it's not real. Well, I didn't understand your point. You're saying, well, like, legally it's not a crime. So I get that. Yeah, well, I'm saying people use the term hate speech a lot. It doesn't as a exist. Thing, yeah. Or even just as anything that you know, hate speech is it's not a real thing. It's a term that's used that people think of some kind of a carve out uh, with the First Amendment of the, or the ability to speak freely. Hate speech is not a qualifier. It's not a real thing. I agree. Yeah. Do you think that speech can be harmful? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I think. I mean, speech can be offensive. Yeah. And I think sometimes maybe people misuse that term. Well, they use it to just say speech is harmful as opposed to speaking harmfully is illegal. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's not. Right. Right. Um, no, that's that's the issue. But a lot of people think that either it is or that it should be. <laughs> you think that it should be? No. At any levels? No. Not not outside of the current constitutional parameters that we have on the freedom of speech. Would you like to sit down and talk about it? It would just be five minutes if you'd like uh, to. Sure. That'd be great. Yeah, Thank you so much. Hold on. All right, thank you very much. Felicia? Felicia. Okay, I appreciate it. We already kind of... Oh, well, sorry, I wasn't... <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I wasn't stalking you. I saw it right there. I did, it didn't require a lot of Columbo work. Uh, no, we kind of, you know, I, I don't, you, you obviously already uh, understand my position that it's not a real thing, but you sound surprised when um, you ask me if I think it should be enforceable or legislated. To, no, I don't. It seems that you, you maybe do. So I look at it this way. There's, for example, I'll give you a good example. Mm -hmm. Alcohol. Drinking mm -hmm. alcohol is legal. Sure. But it is illegal to drink alcohol to the point where you can harm yourself or harm others. Sure. Another example is seatbelts. It's you have to be required to wear seatbelts because not wearing them could be harmful yeah. to others. So I see hate speech in that same category, but the hard part is where I'm not 100% sold on that it should be um, illegal to have hate speech is there's no clear line where you can say, okay, once you've crossed this point, now you've done something right. wrong. I would, I would say that right now there is a clear line, and we have the First Amendment, and the only exceptions would be issues that are already crimes. For example, physical threats of violence or uh, com committing slander, right? right? So people often use this example, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Well, sure you can, if there's a fire. What you can't do is lie that causes actual physical harm. That's already a crime. Right. So, um, but again, the Supreme Court has affirmed that those are completely separate issues because those are already criminal acts regardless of speech. There is no differentiation between offensive speech and hate speech. So if, if you would think that it needs to be taken further than where it currently is with the First Amendment, I guess what would you uh, qualify as, as harmful speech? And that's, that's the hard part to, de to define. What is that point where you cross the line for this topic of hate speech? Because you're yeah. right, it's defined already, legally defined, but if you were gonna add something onto it, how would you add it? And if I well, it's not legal. It's only legal to legally defined, and that the Supreme Court said it's not a thing. 
Oh, right. I'm yeah, saying yeah. The, the examples you gave have already right. been outlined. Those, those are the examples of, yeah. of slander Correct. or of uh, direct threat. Where to buy, freedom of speech kind of has its boundaries. Right. But if I were to, let's see, if I were to come up with a, an example, it's, it's just a hard one. It's essentially when people say things that can kind of gather the masses to do something that's harmful. For instance, if a very popular figure were to, to say, oh, this person... I don't like this guy. You know what? You should go out. You should go out and kill him. Well, that's a crime. So that's already defined as a crime. That's a crime, yeah, because it's an actual offense. You are calling people to a violent action against somebody. Okay, you give me an example of hate speech that isn't a crime that people want to be defined as a crime because that's really all I think Offensive should be. terms. Oh, like like so for the, example, like the like, N word. Right. People want that to be illegal. Well, things like different people have different definitions. So offensive slurs. So people have. The, the reason I ask is because there have been people who said, well, speech that is harmful. And they haven't used examples like, you yeah, I would respect that. Someone saying, hey, kill this person. Yeah. Or even someone saying, hey, I want you to throw a milkshake on his head. Yeah. That's a crime, right? We yeah. both agree. Because then if someone does it, they follow your instruction. Um, but people have given me examples like othering minorities or speaking in a way that's offensive. No. Give you an example saying you should kill Felicia because she's black. Let's assume there's a racist, right. right? That's obviously wrong. But someone who's a racist saying, I don't like Felicia because she's black. I think that's horrible. I disagree with him, but he does have the right to say it. I agree with that. I don't think that should okay. be illegal at all. Okay. It's just someone's opinion. It's right. not causing anyone any harm. It's, it's uh, I, I, so I see what your, your definition is now. It's not, it's just someone's opinion. Right. right. Because it seems to me that what you believe is not permissible uh, in the realm of speech is based on what we already have, laws preventing actual crimes Correct. from happening. So it sounds to me like in talking about this, you wouldn't want any addendums, any additional not speech at all. to be banned. Okay. As far as just simply calling someone uh, either a name or having an opinion about someone or something, no. No matter how offensive. No matter how offensive. Yeah. Okay. I, I agree completely. Thanks right. so much. We found some comments. No Thank problem. you, Felicia. Appreciate it. Thank you for sitting down. Hey, how's it going? Common ground. The day was shaping up nicely. Then Kiefer Sutherland from Lost Boys showed up. Hey man, I'm going to call bullshit on one thing here. I'm a political science graduate. In sure. And my experience there was not like that at all. I mean, it was okay. not a, like a hard right by any means or anything, but I definitely had no um, political science professors or philosophy professors that were, A, pushing a hard left agenda. I mean, some of them were more to the left, some were more to the right, some were really in the yeah. center. But never once did I ever have any professor encourage any kind of behavior such as that. Well, the I'm, entire four and a half years. I'm glad to hear that. You know, my brother went to UT and that wasn't the case. And when we visited UT, that wasn't the case with both professors and students who wanted to span. Well, I mean, the students and then, one thing, but I don't And then statistically, I, I, I'm glad to hear that's the case. But do you realize there are 38% of college campuses have no conservative professors I mean, across this country? Know where you're thinking. Zero. I don't know where you get that from. Yeah, zero. And, I, and you can bring it up. We have it up at the website. And so okay. you can check the source. Oh, Let's assume. The website. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. Do you have any sources for anything that you're claiming? No, I don't, but you don't either. Well, I do. They're, they're posted right now where you can go and see them. Okay. So I want to make sure this. So it's okay. something. I don't have it right with me. You to prove it, but you're the one making the assertion. Well, the onus is on you to. Need to it. Well, it is because you said you wanted to call bullshit and made an anecdotal claim. So the empirical, the verifiable shows that there is a clear imbalance of political worldviews expressed on college campus to the point where there's 38% of college of campuses that have no conservatives whatsoever. And then, of course, in the on the campuses that do have conservative professors, they're in a very significant minority. If you disagree with that, you disagree with the sources, that's fine. Um, but I would present them and say that's something concerning again because nowhere else do you see that imbalance of worldview. You don't see it in any other workplace outside of academia, uh, the entertainment industry, and media. I mean, you know, diff there's different studies show different things. Would you like to sit down and talk about it? Yeah, would you not really. I just want to talk to you. I'm not trying to like. You want to? Dodge the Let's let him finish. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, could could I don't really could, want to like be on Infowars or anything. I'm, I don't work with Infowars. Right. Because they're here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you, but you can sit down and talk with me. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm talking to you right here. That's fine. Okay. If you want to, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna scooch a little bit so we can hear because we can't really hear you. I, just I mean, you're on camera anyway, so. Sure. Um, as far as free speech goes, I definitely agree with you on a lot of things. I'm coming from a leftist perspective on that. Sure. Um, I think that um, uh, criticism of like PC culture is not just. Um, something on the right, there's a lot of people on the left that, you know, have, um, sorry, I, I didn't, like, come prepared. That's okay, no, I appreciate it. Like, 
you know, there's a lot of people on the left that have criticisms of um, PC culture and like the postmodern condition that we're in. Mm -hmm. So um, I would agree that um, you know I don't think the government should legislate your right to say you know I'm a First Amendment extremist as far as that goes. Good. You know, and I think that people have gone way too far. But I would also strongly I also strongly support people's right to. Would you mind just moving a little closer so we can hear you on the microphone is off? Yeah. Uh, but, um, I would also strongly support, you know, uh, others' right to vehemently oppose what you're doing. Sure. You know, by almost any means necessary. But what do you mean by almost I, any means necessary? Well, I support, I support a, um, I guess I'm saying, like, I, I go further than, like, the liberal democratic position of, oh, wishy-washy, multiculturalism's great, but we should, right. you know, kind of nebulously in the clouds not really stand for anything. Sure. Um, I don't think it's the job of the state to tell you what to say, but in my positions a little, you know, still being hashed out on this, Yeah. private individuals and organizations, you know, have the right to, you know, you have to be able to kind of defend what you're going to do, maybe with force, you know, I'm not advocating violence. You're, you're not? But you said by almost any means necessary. By almost any means, yeah. Do, does that extend beyond speech? Does that extend to, I mean, first off, what is it that people would oppose as far as what I'm doing? Well, I'm not talking about you, per se. I'm talking about more extreme people okay. to the right of you. Okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not like, saying you need to come in and physically intimidate you. I'm yeah. Like, I'm not, that wouldn't I'm, be good. I'm not extreme that. I'm talking about... That'd be a bad idea. Uh, extremists beyond you. you okay. Know, people that are openly uh, about racial genocide about, you know, about... Sure. You know, think, you know I'm talking about, like, Richard Spencer and people like that. I'm not okay. saying that you are... Him, yeah. Well, you know, but the thing is, I've been accused of, of racism, I've been accused of homophobia and sexism without any sort of qualifications, too. So the challenge then becomes, again, speech can be combated com combated with speech, right. not with physical force. Well, I, I can't speak to... I, have, I mostly know you as a meme about, you know, sure. like, whatever, you know, yeah. it's like... Um, so I'm not going to speak to like what you stand for because I've never, admittedly, right. taken the time. To Wait, write, I, I, so but I'm not gonna what I'm saying you. is that by your worldview, right? You said that, and it's kind of eerie where you said okay. by almost any means necessary. You know, I have had physical acts of violence, both committed and threatened against me, okay. because of ill-conceived notions, uh, of positions that I don't even hold, right? Okay. So do you see the danger in saying if someone is an extremist, if someone is a racist or a sexist or a homophobe, then you have the right? as a private individual by any means necessary by almost any means necessary to correct them do you see the problem with that because well, yeah, you're now well, combating okay. speech that may be right or wrong by the way you may not right. even understand but, what this person is saying with violence well what I think is missing from both sides of the of the argument here yeah. is a lack is like a certain amount of common sense about t telling the difference between you and say the alt-right, you know, the real alt-right, the people who actually advocate for ethnic cleansing, eth you know, right. you know, things like that. Things like that I fully support combating by any means necessary. And that means violence? Yeah. So, so. so what, what would constitute, uh, I guess, ju what would justify enacting yeah. violence against somebody? Give me an example. Um, somebody who makes credible claims of wanting to... Um, persecute people based on their race. Who makes actual? And I'm not talking like he didn't use the pronouns that I think he should use. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that already happens in Canada. I'm not talking about Canada. I'm talking about here. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about people that actually actively promote um, not just hateful speech, but promote violence or calls to exterminate. Yeah. Well, listen, that's already illegal. So, for example, to call to to call for the extermination of black people yeah. or to call for the extermination of Jews, right, that's illegal. Saying, I hate Jews or I hate black people, which I'm not saying, right. make, because you've already mentioned okay. violence, so I want to make sure I understand. Uh, I don't think that's something that warrants acts of physical violence. I okay. think you combat that with speech. Do you think, do you disagree? You think someone saying, I dislike black people, I think they're inferior, do you think that warrants physical violence? Um... In the right situation, yeah, I do. Um, okay. I don't, like I said, I think there's a difference between the state being in the business of that and private citizens. I know, and I know that my view is kind of extreme on that. It is. I'll, I'll, 
totally accept that. And the challenge now is, of course, everyone's called a Nazi or a racist or a homophobe who disagrees with people on the left. I mean, you know, that you, it seems like you're sensible. You agree that that's a problem. I, I do agree. And that that that's that actually used as a call to violence far more than someone using a racial epithet in a joke, right? People say, that person's a Nazi, that person's a racist, that person is a homophobe, and people are having acts of violence committed against them all the time. Right? You're having well, people getting milkshakes. You're having people, you have acid in the milkshake, dude. Who cares? Who I care. Why? Because I don't know if there's acid in that milkshake. It's a salt. It's battery. Okay. Okay. No, oh, I would never encourage... Okay. No, I'm not scared of milkshakes. I think someone who throws a milkshake is a oh. but I But I do have a problem with someone invading I mean, someone's I personal space. Sorry for my language. No, that's fine. But I think... No, I don't... When you're saying I'm scared. I'm not scared of milkshakes. Okay. But I, I, I think people should be concerned with milkshakes because they don't know what's in that milkshake. And I think that if you go around and you toss something on someone or you think that that's okay... Okay. You warn an ass kicking, right? So, would okay, you agree well, by those same rules? If someone throws a milkshake, they should get their asses kicked, or at least it's deserved. Uh, I mean, they can go toe to toe, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah but I don't. But I, I'm willing to go both ways, man. I'm not just like. You sure. Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I understand. By myself, you know, I, yeah, but the yeah. Pr the problem with it again is just because someone's racist or has speech you don't like, you you really you're not entitled to commit acts of physical violence, and that seems to be a common thread with like the antifa left today, and that's a real problem. Well, here's the thing: is that's something I believe that I would be willing to accept the legal consequences of that sure. in the right situation. So I understand. I just I'm making a distinction between what I feel is right and what I feel should be legal. So you want to operate outside the bounds of the law because you feel. So, so. I mean, the right situation. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I disagree. I call that uh, criminality. Okay. So, but I, I, I would agree with your right to say whatever you want to say, regardless okay. of how offensive. Right. Now, if you were to call someone to an action of violence, for example, call someone to, uh, whether it's milkshake or assault or punch or stab somebody, yeah, I, I, I would report you. Okay. That, because that already is a crime. So okay. I think it's still remarkably consistent. You can say something that's super offensive, don't okay. care, All right. as bad as you want, but committing an act of violence or calling someone an act of violence, that's a real problem, and I don't think that plays a role in today's political discourse. But okay. I appreciate your intellectual consistency on it. Okay. I really do. I think the lady behind you wanted to say something. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Thank you, man. I appreciate right. it. Thank I you mean, for talking, even though we disagree. You know Thank you, man. Okay, started off hostile, but didn't end half badly. Thanks, Kiefer. Now, for the first time ever, given the current topic, I wanted to bring in my half-Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, to try his hand. What's going on, man? Bill. Nice uh, to Edwin. meet you. Edwin. Um, I go by Nazar Games on the internet. Okay. Um, so I, how can you possibly believe that hate speech isn't real when we just had white supremacists walking our streets literally if they were if there were less laws with guns and, and and the way the way it is now, they would probably take advantage of people of color, the gays and, and I'm nervous, don't mind me. So. No, no, that's, it, it's, yeah. it's a question. It's a question we're here yeah. for. So yeah. let me let me kind of uh, expound on what the topic is on I mean, a broader sense. Don't, don't get me wrong. I know this is America. We, yeah, get a lot, yeah. we have a lot of freedoms. Yeah, we're we the biggest, biggest free country in the world. But right. we, have, we have very fringe problematic issues. I hate using that word. Uh, problematic issues that probably either may need to be addressed or... or Maybe we'll just go away with time, but I really don't think they're going to go away with time. They're just going to probably become more fringe or maybe more extreme. So if they become more fringe, that means they become less loud, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, something exciting is oh. happening here. Steven Crowder is a right-wing extremist that needs to be silenced. <laughs> Steven Crowder raped me. I don't have any proof, but he did it. <laughs> And keep in mind, this was all in good fun, and half-Asian lawyer Bill Richmond knows how to handle himself. Hello, Mr. Jones. We would like to, Mrs. Jones. I'm not sure what <laughs> is the appropriate like way. It. I want to appropriately respect you and the fact that Edwin and I were having a conversation about why hate speech isn't real, and he's trying to change my mind, so we're going to let him change then, my mind. Since you call me Mrs. Jones, I will. Mrs. Jones, thank you. All right, that's more reasonable. <laughs> now you're respecting my gender. All right, so, so, so one of the, so the, so the kind of question we were getting to is like, what is, what are we actually talking about here? And, and so, what, to, to give you the framework that we're talking about is, we have a framework in this country yeah. of uh, the Supreme Court precedent and our laws that says, if it's an emergency, we have a restriction on speech. Yeah. So that's if it's a direct, imminent, serious harm mm -hmm. and viewpoint neutrality. So you can have laws against vandalism, but right. they're not dependent on what the vandalism is. So yeah, what yeah, the yeah. message is, crimes, perjury, fraud, that type of thing. And so, hate speech 
is speech, for example, in Canada, Europe, or France that goes beyond that, that says if it's offensive, if it talks about race in an offensive or demeaning or uh, fear-inducing way, then it should be punishable either by fines or jail or otherwise. And what I'm saying is that the platform that we already have is adequate to cover the examples that you just gave. So if someone is directly inciting violence, if they are carrying guns in a way that intimidates or brandishing weapons, those aren't protected air types of speech. They're already limited and regulated within our system. So why would we need more regulation than that? But don't you don't you feel like if we had like a bill, internet bill of rights at least to generally give us an, a uniform like for like Google say sure, this sure. big entity like Google yeah. uh, a uniform like governmental law saying like this is hate speech this is not hate speech and then this is the terms of service against all private entities wouldn't that be better for for protecting like say you as a creator or so you're right yeah. clarity of rules would make everyone's participation in a private yeah, because company's it, business clear. This is, this is the, the, the media. This is the me modern media. Right. This is the modern newspaper. The newspaper's dead. Radio's dead. Who uses right. radio anymore? Nobody. Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe we might. Maybe Mrs. Um, Jones. But, right. Yeah, maybe Mrs. Jones. Uh, um, but, I mean, I feel like that would be something at least the minimum that we need, the uh, Internet Bill of so Rights. So how would you define what the hate speech is then? Um, I mean, the only thing the only thing I can say that would define hate speech at this point would be anyone like we do have white supremacists in the country. They do want to sure. they want to express their speech as kill kill the gay, kill the the brown man, kill, sure. and that that is a thing that 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 I've seems heard, very very I've problematic. And I'm pretty before. sure none of y'all are racist. Oh, no. I'm it's usually most confrontations are you between. To non-racist people, so that's usually, and it's just a heat of the moment issue right. and stuff like that. And it's, you see it time and time and again in the workplace, time and time and again. But it's what usually, would be the definition? How would we ask people to apply the law if it's not just a subjective statement? If it's just how offended is it? And perhaps the other question would be: Is who's going to decide? Because if we give the government the power, then that means Trump decides now, and then whoever wins the next election or the election after that, they get to decide what it is. Is and why should we give I mean, government the power to I mean, decide what hate speech I feel is? Like, I feel like it should evolve over time. Things do change. Okay. Uh, people change. Um, I, do believe, I do believe for the left, they, they tend to change the goalposts. For the case of, like, Carlos Massa, he uses queer... Um, um, as a term for other, I, I I don't I don't really agree with that as a and a fellow gay man. It's really really like boggles my mind that we would reclaim a word that was used against gay people um, for so long. Right. Uh, to so it's it's just me being the liberal eating a liberal in that, in that front. Um, so I don't know well, what I, mean, frankly, I don't it know. It sounds like to, you're being yeah, logically consistent. Yeah, I mean uh, to say, wait a minute, this was a word that we find to be offensive, so we should stop using the word. And I think that's kind of my yeah. point is to say. If you ignore viewpoint neutrality, then you can yeah. then you can go out and say it's and okay. Then, and then we have like the I dubs of the world anyone. trying to reform those words. And for him, it doesn't look so problematic. But if right. another person says like the N word or something, it will be problematic. So I don't know. It's 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 really hard to tell. Like, what line do we need to draw, especially for the YouTube front? Because I'm a big fan of YouTube. Got it. Uh, I don't watch your channel. I'm sorry, but I, I am sub to you. Um, I do watch on occasion. Um, uh, it just depends. You're, you kind of, you kind of are taboo. So, in my front. So, I mean. Uh, well, and, and let me ask you. Let me kind of conclude on this point yeah. and, and let Mrs. Jones do what he wants yeah, to do yeah, here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you think that we should? Is it your point that we, if, to the extent that the First Amendment doesn't allow for a hate speech law, find, should we amend the First Amendment to allow for these find, types of laws? We need to make a bill, an internet bill of rights. Right I okay. feel like it really needs like to be addressed. These are issues that that kind of like that are uniform because what happens is I, I'm on Twitter and I watch this for like the yes. longest time period of time. The, the goalpost changes and right. when the Twitch it changes, YouTube it changes. So it's really hard to determine where, where. Where the, is, lines are. Where, where the lines are. And yeah. then with YouTube being so vague, sometimes they're like, you're, you're demonetized. And in situations where it's targeted harassment, I can understand. For Carlos Massa, I do understand. 
Um, not so much the, the, the gay, lispy gay thing, I, even though that's pretty shitty. Um, and offensive. Un, and, and, and offensive. Okay. Um, but that's... Um, but I do care about the anchor baby. That is kind of like a little bit more um, further, af- more yeah, offensive. way, oh, sure. way past. That might the, be that might be the case. The norm for civil conversation, even in in, in our day of age. Yeah. I don't really know Carlos Massa very well. Sure. And um, I don't know his background very yep. well. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll see something on Twitter. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Well, we'll for, see. for those who are trying to listen yeah. and haven't been able to, one thing that Ed said that I, I definitely agree with is yeah. the constant shifting of the goalposts and something we talked about earlier, yeah. that it's hard for anyone, whether you're on the left or the right, to know yeah. what creators can do on social media platforms if the goalposts keep moving. Yeah. So at the very least, a pen, separate setting aside our views, we can at least agree, let's get some clarity from these platforms yeah, yeah, on what the rules are. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, I agree. All right. I agree, especially on the YouTube front um, and the Twitter front. Wonderful. Thank you. It was great talking to you guys. Can we get a round of applause for Ed for coming out here tonight? Thanks, half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond. Now time for this Z. Hi. How are you? I'm curious. I'm Steven. What's your name? I'm Adrian. Adrian. Nice to meet you. So you are upset about limitation of speech, like ideologically. So in what context? Let me, yeah, let me sort of state it so we understand exactly the premise. Uh, hate speech is not real. It's not a real thing. Uh, legally, it's not recognized as a real thing. Mm-hmm. There are no exceptions to the First Amendment, regardless of how offensive the speech is. Uh, and I, of course, think that's a good thing. If you disagree, then on that premise, you're more than welcome to change my mind. This is, um, so it's about the First Amendment. What exactly, what actions by Google are you uh, objecting to? Well, I'm not talking about Google right now. I'm talking about hate speech, which is a term which has been thrown around quite a bit. Um, and it's not a real thing. Okay, but would you agree that um, there's like unfair censorship ideologically going on on social media and the internet uh, based on... Uh, you know, I wouldn't use the word necessarily censorship because censorship would typically involve uh, a role of government. But okay. I certainly would say, yeah, uh, uh, unfair uh, treatment and um, uneven application of the laws on social media, yeah. And it's, and it's been done so under the guise, often, of hate speech, which isn't a real thing. But, so you're framing it with the First Amendment thing, but what you're directly, I feel like, I'm a little confused here. What you're directly sure. um, objecting to is, I'm assuming, the, like, on public forums on the internet, essentially. Or no, like, not necessarily. I mean, we can talk about that. We can definitely talk about that. Uh, I think that what's used as kind of a, a, a I guess sort of a, uh, a fulcrum for that is the idea that well, we're adapting our guidelines for uh, to include more expansive, uh, I guess sort of uh, examples of hate speech is what they would say. It's very, very vague. It's very hard to navigate those rules. So before we get to that, you know, there is a the United States law, which freedom of speech is absolute. There are no exceptions. There are no exceptions for hate speech. And so then the onus is on perhaps you or people at Google if they say, well, we're going to change our rules to include more hate speech, even though we know there haven't been violations of guidelines then the onus is on them to define what hate speech is. Whoever says hate speech is a thing, the onus is on you to define what hate speech is, because it's not. So you feel it's irresponsible for corporations that dictate public forums to use legal terminology like hate speech, and it's like de facto censorship? Well, I'm not saying it's de facto censorship at that point, but using the term hate speech, saying we're going to uh, create new guidelines based around hate speech, and it's not defined, I think that's a problem, because it's not a real thing. It just seems a little abstracted to me. Like, what if they just called it something different? They just said, like, things we don't like aren't allowed on our platform. I would have no problem with that. Mm. If they said offensive speech or speech that we disagree with as a company is not allowed on our platform uh, or not allowed on our publishing platform, I would have no problem with that. So you disagree with the term, the use of the term hate speech? I disagree with the use of the term hate speech because it's not a real thing. I don't think, uh, and maybe you can clarify your position if you disagree on that first step, right? Whether you think hate speech is a real thing, if you think hate speech should be regulated. Um, and then as it relates to Google, YouTube, uh, listen, they, they enjoy the legal protection of platforms right now and that they're not liable for things that are posted on their platforms. And that's because they're seen as an open form and open town square. Now the difference between that and let's say, for example, my website, or the difference between that and let's say the New York Times website is they are a publisher, right? Not everyone can write for the New York Times. The New York Times is clear about that. So they don't enjoy the protections of not being liable for what they write. YouTube, Google, Facebook right now, they enjoy the benefits of being regulated as a platform or similar to a public utility without following those same rules. So if they said we are a publisher 
and we are pushing a narrative. And we, even though we recognize hate speech is not a real thing, we like to include it in our company code of conduct. We want to get rid of people we disagree with. That would be fine. But that's not what they're doing. So you feel like if they want to dictate what is shown on their platform, then they should be held to the standards of a publisher, not a platform. Uh, of a platform, not a publisher, yes. OK. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I just think they need to decide on that front. I don't really have any strong opinions on censorship. I was just curious about the corporate versus uh, governmental aspect of a lot of because a lot of people do compare uh, like social media censorship to government censorship which I don't really think is an apt comparison I, I don't necessarily think it's an apt comparison until you look at them enjoying protections from the legal system right or if you look at them um, receiving any kind of tax incentives or any kind of subsidies which you know we're not really necessarily talking about in the case of Google but certainly incentives uh, to regulate them as a platform. My thing is, the first step I would say is this, they need to sit in a court of law, they need to declare legally whether they are a private publisher, in which case they can de-platform anyone they want, treat people however they want based on point of view, or if they're a platform, in which case they do not have the right to do that. Right now the guidelines are very vague, and that's a term that's often thrown around, you know, hate speech that's really used as a political weapon to silence voices you disagree with. And that's why certainly, um, I think it's ir irrefutable that it should not play a role in our society at large, the idea of hate speech laws. And I think if someone is going to declare that as part of the policy on their platform, it's their duty to define what it is, and, and, and they haven't. Hmm. Um, is there anything there with which you, you no. disagree? That makes sense. No? I wasn't sure about your premise because I was confused by the location in front of the Google office. Yes. Well, obviously they have, the, recently I was the subject of some controversy where they, uh, yeah, they did. They completely demonetized the channel, and they, even though they acknowledged that I didn't violate any guidelines, but someone complained from Vox. And as a result, there have been hundreds of channels uh, where people have made a living and obviously employ many people that have been completely removed from an ability to continue to create content and make their living on YouTube. And that's a problem. That's a problem when people don't understand the rules. It's a problem when YouTube's removing people because, in some cases, it's not even a point of view. In some cases, it's just because of historical channels that have covered World War II and the Nazis um, when YouTube isn't clear about what the guidelines are. Um, that's a problem to me when there's a cozy relationship between government and big tech and they're receiving benefits without the equal responsibility. So then would you say that we need more direct government interven intervention into large corporations to improve quality of life of citizens? I think the first, well, I think the first step is them deciding what they are, a publisher or a platform, and it hasn't been answered yet. And if they are a platform, we don't necessarily need new regulations, what we just need is for them to follow the regulations already in the books for public utilities and platforms. Hmm. And if they say we're publishers, well then we just have the ability to enforce the regulations that are in the books for being, them being a publisher, meaning they can be held liable for everything that's published on their platform. So we don't really need new regulations, we have those categories already. It's just that YouTube benefits from one category while then implementing the, the rules of a different category. Yeah, and that's I don't doubt issue. that. Those tech companies are very sleazy. <laughs> yes, yes they are, yeah. Um, so that, that's really just where I line up, which I, I hope makes sense and has been consistent. Mm -hmm. yeah? That makes more sense. Okay, well thank you very much. Thank you for sitting down. I appreciate okay. it, thank you. Thanks, Z. Great conversations all around today. But as always, you can't please everybody. Hi. Hey, Jonathan. Jonathan, hi. Hey. Hey, Jonathan. So, uh, I've actually watched a few of your, or I guess probably close enough. I watched a few of your videos. Yeah. And I think you're very entertaining. Okay. I haven't done much research on this topic. Okay. But I'm sure you've done a lot. So, can we spend the first like few minutes of you educating me on your stance? Well, no. Let me let me make it really pretty simple. So sure. it's just about stating something in the affirmative, yeah. and then you're, if you are feel passionately enough that my mind needs to be changed, that's right. why you're sitting in the chair, right? Well, actually, so, okay. Well, if not, then you shouldn't be sitting there. Well, uh, but I, I don't, was that the assumption that everyone brings that they will succeed in changing your mind? Well, the attempt to. But it could also be they're trying to learn your position. Well, no. Change my mind as you change my mind. I'm not here to change your mind. No, no. no but what if I'm trying to learn your position? So, yeah. Let me let me be really clear okay. here. Okay. Uh, hate speech is not a thing. It's not real. What do we define to be hate? To be hate speech? Yeah. We're talking about hate speech. What yeah. do you define to be hate speech? Well, no, but you're, you're making a statement here. Yeah. Well, I don't, it's, not, it's not a real thing. It's legally not recognized no, but what's, as something. What's not the real thing? The Supreme Court has affirmed several times that there is no carve out for anything called yeah. hate speech in the United States. Okay. So any speech, no matter how offensive, yeah. no matter how hateful yeah. in its rhetoric, it's not identified as hate speech. It's protected under the First Amendment. Okay, so I'm actually not here to disagree with you on your, on your uh, premise. Sure. I'm here to just make a critique sure. of like the presentation style. Okay. So I've heard it argued many times and very convincingly that 
it would be a slippery slope for the government to regulate a subset of speech that people find to be offensive as hate speech. Right. Okay, so here's a clear example. Um, suppose that we have different standards for what we consider to be hateful, as I think you just described in a previous uh, conversation. Sure. And some people say, well, this subset of like uh, semantic usage I find to be offensive, and someone says, I disagree. Who should be the arbiter between those two sets, mm -hmm. and who should decide what the punishment should be? Yeah. So obviously, to make a disparaging remark- Or do you want to continue, or do you want me to answer you that? I thought that. that was my question. Yeah. No one. No one, right. So actually, I agree with you. But here's the critique that I hope you can address. I think there's things that we find in society to be hurtful, mm -hmm. and obviously not unanimously. And maybe even actually just a minority of people, but still quite a few people. And by vocalizing how it's so arbitrary and destructive for the government to regulate that kind of speech, the way in which we vocalize that can actually do a lot of harm. Okay. So here's an example. Suppose that I were to use a racial slur against Asian minorities. Um, and then I say, well, technically, the way we interpret that slur and the way we process that is pretty subjective. Moreover, if we allow the government to define this subset of slurs as so heinous that we can punish it by law, mm -hmm. then we actually face an issue because they're the ones doing the defining and then they can arbitrarily increase what falls into that category sure. in a way that's harmful to society. I agree. But suppose I also go on YouTube and I say, these people are extremely stupid in advocating for the government to hold this position. There's a way in which that's insensitive to but people. Advocating for the government to hold what position? The position that we should regulate this subset of speech is hateful. Okay. So, I, thought you, I thought you were saying someone who goes on YouTube, forgive me, I want to make sure I understand. Yeah. It sounded like you were saying someone who goes on YouTube and says that Asian people are stupid. And no, no, advocates. no. Oh, no, I'm saying okay. that suppose I'm a person who observes Asians being labeled with this racial slur. Okay. And then I say... Or inferior. And, or, yeah. or whatever, whatever the terminology is. Right. And I say to them, hey, the way that this is being designated, albeit offensive, should not be categorized as a government in any legal terms sure. because of the slippery slope that it'll lead us down. Right. But if, suppose I also say that in a way that's very dismissive of people who hold that position mm -hmm. and not considerate of the particular viewpoint that they have, that itself, that dismissiveness and the lack of sensitivity, I feel like can do more harm than good. Okay. So I think there's a more nuanced position to be held, which is saying, as I'm saying now, I think the government regulation has a lot of flaws and therefore I agree with you that the government shouldn't regulate in the way that you're uh, describing, but I think the way in which you advocate for the position sure. against ge government regulation can be more sensitive and nuanced okay. than I so think what, is often held. So what's the, you said you had a, a critique. That was the critique. That you think it's not nuanced. Well, I think that it's not sensitive and not nuanced in like, yeah, not nuanced, yeah. Okay, so you, you think that simply stating a position in the affirmative that is factually accurate, which you both agree that hate speech isn't a real thing in the United States, and you're welcome to sit down and change my mind in a long-form, unedited interview where I just let you spoke for borderline a soliloquy, Yeah. how much more nuanced or fair or sensitive could, it, could one get? No, 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 but there's a way in which you can be dismissive of people, maybe not in this specific context. Okay. Like right now, you're making a very strong point to hear me out, which I appreciate. But I think just in general, in the aggregate, there's a certain tone and a certain disposition that you can set a normative stance on in the way you conduct yourself, maybe not just in interviews, but just in general, mm -hmm. that is not uh, sensitive or nuanced. And I think that could be an you issue. You like that word, nuanced. So maybe yeah. like some, so this, this is a personal critique. Right. Correct? Well, no, actually, I think you're pretty funny. Okay. And I actually like watching your videos. But I think generally, like people who agree with what you say, and also I think occasionally you can be more callous than is uh, called for. Okay. And so maybe, like in this particular case, you're being very kind. Yeah. But there's a general callousness that can pop up here and there, which I think is more harm than good. Like, like what? And what, what are, well, I don't what watch that many of your videos. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then maybe that's why you think I'm funny. You haven't maybe. Seen you haven't seen enough of it. Could be. Uh, yeah, you, you should yeah. talk with my wife. She'll tell you it's not the okay. case. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I appreciate you sitting down, but yeah. I can't really address any critique that sounds to be somewhat personal based on me being callous if you haven't watched the content and can't give me any examples. So okay, so here's actually... I, I apologize. Wait, here's, here's I, why that's, it's, that's not a full rebuttal. Because I... Well, it's I not a rebuttal. I'm saying is I can't address it. If you were, if you were no, to say... You can actually. You can address it. Because there are other people who've brought up to you that they don't like the way in which you demean certain groups. Right, yeah, I don't And care. so they call you callous. So I don't actually have to make that argument myself. It's already being made. And I'm just saying there may be some validity to that. What well, they're that's, calling that's an, for... That's an appeal to uh, popularity fallacy. It doesn't mean no, that's No, no, right. no, it's not. What you said yeah, is... is no, if, but, the, if some people say that what I've said is offensive, right. that doesn't mean that what I say is offensive. No, no, actually, I'm not saying what you're saying is offensive. What you just said is you're being too vague in addressing the critique and you should watch more of my content. 
my response is there are people who have watched your content and they brought up maybe not in that exact term mm -hmm. that they find you to be callous yeah. and their response which i think could be too drastic might be we should outlaw this we should ban you we should take sort of drastic action i'm not saying that that's a valid response mm -hmm. for the exact reason that you've specified earlier in earlier videos yeah what i'm saying is that there's a certain sensitivity that you can have in addressing your critique of people who want to like make it illegal to say certain things that we call hate speech. Right. And that sensitivity would be nice. Or not nice, actually, it's too big of a word. It might win you more. Actually, no, that's not true, because people like the fact that you're more callous. I think, okay, let me phrase it this way. It sets a normative stance about being callous, which I don't think is a good thing. Right. Yeah. So we want comedy to be sensitive. Well, I think in your case, there's a way in which, no, actually, I don't know if I call this a critique of comedy because there's a way in which critiquing people in general and actually making it so that you can't critique people makes them making them protected is actually a disservice to them because we say they're actually too much of a victim for us to address them in the way we address others. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. I am saying though, when we make a critique of the legal system, even though it is involves comedy, we might do more harm than good by the callousness with which we do it. Well, I wasn't critiquing the, the legal system. No, but if uh, I brought that up, you would have, so. And well, no, yeah, we, we, were, we were talking about, first off, yeah, when we were talking about the legal system, I was talking yeah. about hate speech right. as it defined. The only way it's ever been addressed is yeah. that it's not an actual but, thing. Right, so but then yeah. you were telling me you're, you came out up to issue so, a personal yeah. critique, which, by the way, listen, you may think uh, my, you know, the comedy is callous on a yeah. late night show. That's your right to think so, and right. it's right for anyone else to think so. Right. I don't really know why that matters. Well, so here's, here's actually, I'm just... Because, yeah, and I, I yeah. do think it's important, I just talked about this earlier. Sure. Um, you're not super familiar with my content. Not so, super, yeah. Right. So what you're experiencing right now, would you say this has been respectful? Yeah. Which has been nuanced, sensitive? Yeah. Okay. This is how we do all of the Change My Minds. This is how we do all of the segments that are long-form debates with people who come onto the program, right? right? Context does determine your behavior. It doesn't determine your values. But for example, me telling a joke at a late night comedy club, yeah. which I do, is going to be a different kind of behavior than me, for example, uh, having someone in my program to debate. Right. It's going to be different, right, mm -hmm. contextually, than how I'll behave with someone like you who's given me the courtesy of sitting that. down. Yeah. So, again, if we say, well, hold on a second, this is okay what we're doing now, but in the yeah. context of comedy, it needs to be more nuanced, it needs to be more sensitive, that's fine, and that's a perfectly valid personal critique yeah. to have. I just don't agree with it. Okay, so I think... So, so yeah, I, I think... Okay, go, go ahead, but I, I don't think, I just don't think we're going to agree. I don't think that comedy needs to be sensitive or nuanced. So... I think it needs to be funny. That's my only qualifier for comedy. I think there's... So actually, the reason I bring this up is not because I think in general comedy should be sensitive or nuanced. I think it's just when we advocate for a lack of government regulation, there's a way in which we can do it that normalizes certain callous behavior and thinking, which is just not a good thing. So you've said specifically that in these sort of long form conversations, you're very sensitive, which I agree with. And you've also said that there's certain, I guess, like concerns and priorities we should have when we think of comedy, which is, is it funny? Not, is it nuanced or sensitive? And I think that there's a way in which uh, the importance of a topic can actually branch over into those two realms. Mm -hmm. So the importance of this topic here is like, what is the logical underpinnings of this statement? Mm -hmm. Which we actually really haven't addressed because that's not really what I, uh, came to talk to you about sure. because there's a strong argument for your statement yeah. and therefore I don't want to attack what I don't have a strong counter argument for. No, you said a personal critique. Right. It's very then, vague. Well, it's actually not vague. The, okay. here's, I'll let me say it again and hopefully sure. you can point to me where it is vague. Yeah. So when you critique government regulation, mm -hmm. uh, there's a way and a manner in which you critique it that can do more harm than good in its callous nature. What if you're not critiquing government regulation? What if you're advocating government regulation? That can also be callous. Okay. I'm not saying that I'm in favor of government regulation. So then that's, then that's irrelevant as a pre-qualifier, right? You're just saying people well, shouldn't no, no, no. speak callous. No, but I'm talking about this specific government regulation, which so yeah. often in these kinds of debates, what you'll do is you'll bring up specific laws and then critique them in a very compelling way. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I don't actually don't think in these long form debates, probably you do it as harshly, but maybe in your late night stand up. Exactly. And I think in, in other ways, there's a way you can be callous in making that critique that sets a normative stance. Sure. That I don't think is good. Yeah. Okay, so you just, you personally don't like the way that I do comedy. No, but I also think this is a more nuanced position that can be voiced as you describe people who hold logically inconsistent, admittedly logically inconsistent positions. There's a way in which you can do that 
in a more kind manner. I guess for the sake of comedy. It sounds like it would be a lot of fun at, at parties. So I, I appreciate it. We do because I think we're going around in circles here. Here's what I would I would love to um, see. You know, I would I would love to see you do kind of what you're talking about. You know, practice what you preach yeah. and and do some comedy in a very nuanced, sensitive way yeah. that gets people to laugh and Wait, people can enjoy. I, can I just make one final point? I I, I okay. think we've been doing a couple final points here for a while, but I do okay. appreciate it now. And I'm sorry that you think okay. I'm, I'm callous. I've tried to not be here in this case, and I understand your point. Yeah. I understand your point. I just don't care. Oh, you're still here. I'll chalk that up to our fantastic retention rate. If you enjoyed this uh, installment of Change My Mind, please consider clicking on one of these boxes, I can't see where they are, to watch another installment, or I'd highly recommend considering uh, joining Mug Club at lightwithcrowder.com slash mug club. Not only do you get access to the full daily show and content that you can't see here on YouTube, but because we were recently entirely demonetized, it's the only thing that keeps this kind of content going. So uh, we appreciate your support as public enemy number one of YouTube. We're learning how to navigate these waters. Maybe if we were more effective at transgender makeup tutorials or more advertiser-friendly podcast about transgender makeup tutorials.